are going to, uh, first of all, my name is Purity Wanjiro. I'm the director for Aturex Leadership and Management Consultants Limited. Uh, we are a HR consultancy firm. Uh, we do a lot of training, uh, team building, uh, coaching, mentorship, among other things. So for this particular day, we have a lot of privilege uh, to be joined by one of my friends. Uh, his name is Richard Wafula. He's a, a counseling psychologist. Uh, and here to take us through the topic on how to, to be able to manage change and uncertainty. Uh, and I, I think a lot of us are facing very unprecedented times. This is a new space. For the first time, I doubt if any of us has, has have been in the house for over a month. And uh, then there's a lot of uncertainty around our, our lives, our jobs, our businesses, for those who have businesses. And you are wondering, where should I start? Or how do I even be able to manage this change? For those of us who have children, they keep asking us, when am I going back to school? And when you don't have a very definite answer, then it poses a lot of uncertainty. So to take us through this particular topic is uh, Richard. Richard works with uh, Amani Counseling Center. It's a very famous center uh, that deals with psychology counseling. So let us be able to tap from his wisdom and ex experience at the same time. Uh, feel free to ask as many questions as we go through the session. We hope this particular session will take an hour. So uh, Richard presentation will maintain it to approximately 45 minutes. Then the, the last 15 minutes of the hour, we are able to uh, tackle any questions that you might, have, you might have during this session. So feel free, uh, keep engaging us. Uh, we are recording this particular session. So if you'll need the recording after this, we are going to share it with you. Uh, we also hope to share with you more materials as time progresses. So feel free to drop us your email address on the chat box so that we're able to give you all these materials that are at our disposal. So uh, welcome, uh, Richard. Uh, you can take it over from here. Thank you so much. Right. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, I was saying uh, to all those who have joined us for this uh, discussion, you're most welcome. We want to talk about change, and like you've said, uh, purity is quite a you know, difficult moment, or rather, people say it's quite a strange moment uh, to you know a majority of us, if not all of us, because then. Um, it is not something that people had expected. It is something that just, you know, uh, from nowhere we found ourselves in this situation. And like you have said, Purity, uh, people are wondering, what do I do with my time? People are also wondering, uh, will I survive my job? And how would I, you know, even take care of my family? People are wondering, how are my relationships going to be? And, and so many things have actually changed. Um, in our life and so we want to talk about change and, and, and how do we manage change of course somebody say that you know change is the only in life and so how you go through the change determines so much about how you're going to come out of that particular change that you're going through. I'm, I'm, I'm cognizant to the fact that we, at some point, have gone through different changes, even physical changes. The way perhaps some of you are now, or not the way you were five years ago or 10 years ago. And so you're going through physical change. Uh, to some, it has been an interesting journey. To some, it has been a difficult journey because of what you're actually seeing yourself grow into. Perhaps this is not what you wanted to see yourself grow into at a particular time. But let me focus my attention on this uh, situation we are in, the pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic that has gripped not just this country, but uh, the entire globe. And of course, a number of things are happening, restrictions, government restrictions, 
uh, no moving beyond 7 p.m., no moving out of Nairobi just recently, uh, Mombasa, Kwale. And I'm sure there's a lot of anxiety that comes with it because then we're wondering how will life going to be? And as a human being, we therefore respond to change in different ways. First, I always like to say that change has a percent of, or rather has a degree of loss. And so as we are going through this change, um, we are able to appreciate that we are also going through a loss. And the way we manage this loss in relation to this change really will determine how our lives are going to be at this particular time. I'm just from a radio station, we were talking about how relationships have been affected as a result of this coronavirus. And perhaps I'm, I may be speaking to one or two of you who are in that category where relationships have been affected. Now, let's look at the change curve. As, as, as human beings, how are we likely to respond to change whenever uh, we are faced with one, like we are faced with one at this particular time? A normal reaction of a human being going through any particular change, and I'm in this regard talking about COVID-19, is that we are likely to react by denying. So there'll be denial. That's normally, first, there's shock and denial as the first stage to react to change. So some of us at this particular time are actually going through what you call shock. You're wondering, is this happening? Is this really happening? Um, others are saying, no, 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 no. This, right, so I was talking about the normal process of a human being responding to one's change. And I'm talking about the change curve process. Now, I would already say that anytime we go through change, we actually undergo a degree of loss. And the way we manage that loss will determine how successful we are going to manage the change that we are in now. And so as human beings, the first you know, process of reacting to change is normally shock. And I've said that some of us have experienced the shock. Some of us are in that period where we're asking ourselves, is this really happening? Is this really happening in our country? Is this really happening globally? And I want to say that it is okay to feel that way. It is okay to feel or even deny that this is not happening. And so in this stage, a number of things normally happen to us. As you're in that denial, some of us are still walking without taking precautions. And that is why you walk around and see some people are not putting on masks. And that is why you see some people, you know, going into crowded places. And that is what Will be fine that somebody is still into denial, that somebody is still not appreciating or accepting that we have coronavirus in this country. And like I'm saying, it's normal to actually respond in that particular um, direction. Now, as we are in that confusion of denial, as we're in that confusion of shock, uh, others at this particular time are angry. And that is the next stage. Others are angry. You know, I don't know. Uh, others are even blaming. You know, I've heard people saying, but this government is the one that, you know, perhaps pointing a finger to this government. Others are even pointing a finger to God and say, God, how would you allow this thing to happen to us? Because like uh, two days ago, I had somebody who was telling me, Richard, is there really God? Why would God allow us to even close churches? And so that is a normal uh, process of going through change. And so in that anger, there's mixed feeling. In that anger, uh, others have actually started isolating themselves um, from the people. Because then you're wondering, how am I going to survive? How am I going to survive? Is this thing going to end soon? We have that period where we are asking ourselves, when this pandemic is going to end? Hello, are you able to hear me? Yes, okay. Richard, we're able to hear you. Good, good, thank you. Now, 
Anger is a normal reaction to change. And whenever you feel angry, know that you're just a human being who is actually going through change. Just like you go through any change and not in this pandemic and you feel that anger. But it's most importantly, it's important to be aware that as a human being, <laughs> you're likely to actually feel that anger. What are you doing with that anger? You know, what are you doing with that anger? How are you managing um, that anger? Others have been able to adopt a positive way of dealing with that anger. For example, others are now exercising. Others are spending their time reading. Others are spending their time talking and talking with other members. And that's a positive way of dealing with that anger. But I'm also aware that as we are going through this change and we are overwhelmed by anger, others have developed a negative coping strategy to this. Others are into drugs. Others have decided to drown themselves into alcohol. Others are very irritable. They are not relating very well with people around them. When you get to that stage and you are coping well with this anger, I think at this point in time, it will be important to actually be able to seek support. It's important to talk to someone so that you are able to you know, be supported to deal with that anger. Otherwise, it's going to overwhelm you and it's going to be very difficult for you to go through this change. Most importantly is to be aware that this pandemic is not just in this country, that this pandemic has affected the globe. And therefore, even as you're getting worried and anxious, which I'm saying it's a normal process that human beings go through, what are you doing with yourself? What is it going through your mind that will help you deal with this anger? Um, I've said it's a loss, and so as you're going through it, it's just to appreciate that you're going through a certain degree of loss. It varies because then, according to many, I mean, different, different people will react differently um, to change. Uh, apart from just also reacting angrily, the next stage will be bargaining. And this is a very interesting stage where a number of us are perhaps we want to navigate it properly. Because then we're asking ourselves, I mean, other people perhaps, there's that thought of, would it have come perhaps in April, in June? Would it have given us time to actually plan? Would it have given us time to prepare well? Um, interesting or sadly is that some of the changes come not when we are ready i mean not that we are ready and, and i don't think anyone was ready to go through this pandemic i don't think anyone was ready to go through this pandemic but it's also normal to just be in that beginning stage where you're asking yourself really um would it have delayed a bit would this restriction of going out of nairobi be delayed a bit. Well, the government has given us two or three days um, to be able to actually plan ourselves. Because then we are being told if you know you lose someone as a result of this pandemic, you're supposed to bury your loved one between 24 to 48 hours. And you're asking yourself, <laughs> can I bury this person alone? Will they give me some time? Will the government give me some time to actually also get my immediate family members? It's quite quite a difficult period. It's quite a difficult stage mm -hmm. getting change. And especially what is going through um, in our country at this particular time. Now, if you're able to navigate, if you're able to begin the change process successfully, then you'll get to what we call acceptance. And you'll accept that you're going through change. You'll accept that this change has come in as much as I was not prepared. What other ways, what other options do I have for myself to be able to deal with this change? Thirdly, is that if you will not begin or you'll not negotiate this stage successfully, then you are likely to get to depression. You're likely to get to stress. And when you hear somebody say, I'm stressed, I am depressed, this person, is at the beginning stage has not seen options beyond you know the change that we are currently facing in the country for example you still want to stick with the idea that you will be given time to be out more beyond seven o'clock you still want to imagine or believe that you'll be given an opportunity to actually visit you know people outside the designated, isolated areas. Now, when you remain there and you're not able to negotiate or bargain this stage very well, 
then you're likely to get into depression. This is whereby you actually get to a state that you is changing. It gives you more complication. It can result in more emotional complications. And as you sink into depression, it may be difficult for you to come out of that. Particular, uh, it's a very important. What are some of the things that I may want to do now differently? What opportunities do I have? You know, it's, it's a point, it's a period where you're asking yourself, what opportunities do I have for myself? What are some of the things that I can do differently? I was used to this routine. I was used to, you know, an early morning and late evening. You know, I was used to, you know, moving from one place to the other. I may not have been used to putting on masks wherever I am walking. But what other things can I do to be able to deal with this particular change? This is a very, very important um, stage. Um, all of us. But I want to say at this particular juncture that if you feel overwhelmed, if you feel overwhelmed to actually deal with this change, because then of course you're used to a certain way of doing things. As a human being, it is okay to actually also seek support. It's okay to actually just find someone who can be able to take you through on some of the alternatives that you may have. Sometimes it just calls for more, being more aware of yourself. You know, um, whenever we are faced with you know uh, situations and especially one that we are in it becomes almost difficult to see what are some of the things that we can be able to uh, to actually do differently from where we are but i want to encourage those who have found it difficult already uh, it is uncertain we don't know when this thing is going to end but we hope and believe that it's going to you know end soon we are hopeful that it's going to end soon and so even as we prepare and, you know, just quoting what our minister has always been telling us, you know, preparing for the worst but hoping for the best, I think if you're in that particular situation, it is okay to just seek support so that you are able to deal with this particular change effectively. I've already said that for those that will be able to begin this stage successfully, you actually just want to call acceptance. Those that may not be able to deal or negotiate this stage successfully, will actually get to a stage we call depression. And that is where perhaps the whole uh, problem is when you get to depression. Change has actually um, led some people to get to that stage and it's just to be aware that you can be able to be supported also out of that um, now, as I'm talking about the change curve, as I'm talking about denial, as I'm talking about anger, as I'm talking about uh, uh, those who are listening to me, that it is not obvious that we'll have to go through all that stage in a linear motion. Some of us will get into acceptance that yes, corona is there, yes, changes have been made, and I have to accept and move on. Yes, I may lose my job, yes, I may lose my income, already I've lost my job, already I've lost my income. Already my life has changed. And, and other people were quick to get to acceptance that it is happening. I have to just, you know, accept and move on. Others will actually get angry before, you know, you know, getting to what the first stage of calling denial. So this stage of this process is a linear function. We may want to find ourselves or other people will find themselves at different stages at different times. Importantly, is to be aware, where am I in this time that I'm going through this change? What do I need to do? And it doesn't matter. I mean, you can go through that stage the way I have, you know, um, explained. You get to accept it, but tomorrow morning you wake up and you're overwhelmed. The reality of perhaps being at home, we don't know what the government is going to do to actually um, combat this pandemic further. Other, he, I mean, the government, they have always said that a total lockdown is on their card. So when it gets to that time, how will that be for you and me? You know, so when you're going through change, it's important to realize that you can get to acceptance 
And later on, you realize that you have also, you know, shifted from acceptance to denial. You know, so importantly is to be aware, where am I at at this particular uh, time of my uh, change? It's, it's a difficult process. It's a difficult process. It's a difficult time for us. And I'm sure some of us even are asking, what am I doing with my time? You know, and, and of, of course, those who are used to, you know, a certain routine. And here you are having time for yourself. What am I doing to my time? Now, allow me to talk about how change affects human behavior. Because sometimes when you go through change, there's a certain way we respond to those or rather to that specific change. You are likely to see yourself or you're likely to see certain behaviors that were not with you before. You know, you are likely to actually say something that you didn't even imagine yourself saying as a result of this change. For example, we have time because then those that are working from home and you're wondering now, if I wake up, what am I supposed to do? If I wake up, how is my day like? I don't have anywhere to go. So this change may lead to addiction as a behavior. Some of us are likely to get into addiction. You're likely to get into, and of course, when I talk about addiction, I'm talking about it from a broad perspective, maybe just breaking it down. You could get yourself into sexual addiction, pornography. You could get yourself into um, uh, gambling, you know. Um, you could get yourself um, into, you know, doing things that you're not, you're not doing. And so if you're not careful and if you're not managing your time effectively, then you're likely to get into addiction. And you're likely to destroy yourself as a result of addiction, which is being brought about by having a lot of time on yourself that you're not using constructively. And what am I saying, therefore, is that it will be important when you're at home or wherever you are, because of the change that we are all going through, be able to ask, be able to identify something that will occupy your time constructively so that you don't find yourself into the types of addictions that I'm talking um, about. Now, some of us are going to be very aggressive people. That is another behavior that is brought about by change. And especially, uh, you're being aggressive, passive, you know, aggression, or it can be, you know, um, active, you know, aggression, whereby you're either verbally aggressive to other people, you abuse other people, or you even turn to be physical. This is a result of, you know, the mixed emotions that you're going through. You know, this is a result of the pain that you're going through because of losing either income, because of potential loss of a job, because of potential loss of network, and many other things that you know this change is bringing about. Now, as a human being, um, you're likely to find yourself reacting, you know, that way because then that is the best way to displace, or that is the best way to ventilate, you know, um, you know, your feelings because of a result of what you're going through. So also be aware. Watch out. You know, um, are you are you are you behaving in a manner that likely to suggest that this change um, is, is actually affecting you. And already we have started, you know, hearing, you know, having cases from our clients, you know, who some of them are saying that, you know, um, they're not having, you know, a good relationship because there's a lot of fight between me and my spouse, or rather you're not relating well with your children, you're not relating well with people who are around you. I mean, it's bound to happen. I mean, not to all of us not to all of us, but to some people who, of course, this change is subjecting them to a certain uh, feeling that the only way to let this feeling pass is to be able to displace uh, whatever feeling that you have and you turn to be very, very aggressive. And so very, very important, you need to be aware and you need to observe. Observe you know, you know, things that are happening to you, but also observe things that are happening to the people around you. You know, observe uh, things that are happening um, uh, to people around you and be able to just 
offer that support to them and just letting them know that you know uh, this change is likely to make them behave in a in a particular way. I've already talked about that. You know, the other way we can find ourselves behaving as a result of, of change is some of us are likely to you know use this time to actually get into very serious drug use or very serious alcohol use because then we have all the time for ourselves that we don't know how positively um, to use this time and therefore it becomes a challenge uh, for you it becomes a challenge for yourself, it becomes a challenge to uh, people around you to be able to um, uh, deal with these things maybe at this uh, particular point in time um, just to also let you know that some of us are going to withdraw completely you know some of us are going to withdraw completely because of you know what is going through in your mind you know you're going to withdraw you're going not to even you know reach out to people you're not going to call them um of course there's restricted movements but you just want to do things for yourself some of you at this particular time <laughs> Uh, what if, what if, you know, this pandemic, what if this coronavirus gets to me? Am I going to die? So a lot of fear is going to make people to socially withdraw. We have already seen, and of course, as a precautionary measures where we are now being advised not to greet each other, not to hug, you know. <laughs> uh, so to others, that already is affecting the way they behave. because. To them, small details, you know, just shaking hands um, with your fellow, uh, you know, colleague, a friend, or a loved one is very, very important. Now that is not there. And so it's already making them feel or behave in a manner uh, that is not normal to them. Observe, and I want to repeat that this coronavirus, this change that we are going through, is going to make you behave in a particular way that you are not used um, uh, before. Of course, sleeping habits, um, some of us already, you know, as a way of coping with this, you know, you find yourself, you know, spending time sleeping, you know, uh, the whole day. It will be positive in a way, because then if really you don't have something uh, engaging you, you may want to, you know, uh, just spend time uh, uh, sleeping and all that. Now, these behaviors could be destructive, but other behaviors could be constructive. The important thing is to be more critical with behaviors that you're observing with yourself or people around you that are destructive as a result of this change. Now, those are the behaviors we are saying, it will be important to actually seek support because sometimes we just say, it is okay, it's going to pass. And yet those behaviors turn out to be more destructive in your life and it's going to be very, very difficult to manage them, even post, um, uh, post this period. This corona pandemic has also made us to do things differently has made us to look at things differently it has made us to look at our you know our neighbors our friends differently some of us when we are working or with people and you know uh, it has actually made us to also stigmatize other people when somebody exhibits you know some symptom related to this uh, coronavirus, then other people are quick to point a finger, other people are quick to you know, label them. And so uh, you may also want to be you know, uh, sensitive, not to find yourself labeling other people. It is, not, it is not a crime to be sick, because who wants to be sick anyway, you know? But you are going to find yourself labeling other people, you're going to find yourself you know, uh, calling other people names. They're going to use other names that you will regret later on. Why did I call this person? Why did I label this person? Why did I do this? Why did I do this? So I think it would be safe to observe, you know, what is going on in your life so that even after this change, 
you're not going to start regretting. I wish I knew. I wish I didn't say that. <laughs> um, you know, uh, maybe it may be uh, difficult for you to be able to deal with post uh, corona change than now, where you have what it takes to be able to to, to, to manage and, and be able to um, deal with this. Now, I just want to talk about also um, you know, the rules, the rules of change. You know? I want to talk about the rules of change. Uh, what are the rules perhaps will be important to observe at this uh, particular time and point? What is to be conscious of the fact that we are going through change. You know, it's important to be conscious to the fact that uh, you're going through change. The more you're aware that this change is likely to make you a manner, the more so rule number one, be conscious of the situation. Be conscious of the situation, you know. Be conscious, be more aware, increase your levels of awareness that I'm going through change and I'm likely to behave in a different way. I'm likely to feel in a different way. And it is okay to respect what other people are feeling at this particular time. If you're not feeling sad, if you're not feeling excited, if you're not feeling lonely, if you're not feeling bitter, guilty, you know, um, Don't subject the other person at this particular point in time. Because then, in respecting what they are going through, in respecting how they are responding to this change, what are we doing there for? We are supporting these people to be able to deal with this change. And in return, also, you'll be able to deal with this change um, more effectively. Reevaluate. Look at yourself. You know, at a personal level, and ask yourself, what is, how am I going through this whole period? What are some of the things that are happening in my life? Self revaluation. It's time to actually, you know, have those deep reflections. Um, I, I mean, am I, I mean, am I an employee? And what does it mean for me to be an employee at this particular point in time? Uh, am I going to be asked, you know, to go on a post and paid leave? Am I going to be asked to take a pay cut? What is the situation? Am I a business person? And what is it, you know, what does it mean to be a business person at this particular time? Uh, how is my business going to do at this particular time? Am I losing? <laughs> Once you're conscious of the fact that you're going through change, the next thing is to self-reevaluate yourself. Ask yourself, how am I prepared? How am I prepared in dealing with this change? If you don't self-revelate yourself, you'll find yourself you know, in a confusion kind of a situation. You'll find yourself in a situation whereby it will not be very pleasant because then you don't know. And one of the benefits of self-revelating is you're able to dig deep within you to find resources within you that will be able to help you deal with this change at <laughs> this point in time. And that is why it is very, very important to be able to self um, reevaluate. The other rule is to evaluate your environment. Evaluate your environment. Am I in an environment enough to help me deal with this change? You know? How is my environment in relation to the change that I'm going through? And especially this period in time where we have uh, the coronavirus. Am I in a toxic environment? Am I in an environment where people are just discouraging? Where people are just saying very negative things? Where people are not instilling hope? Where people are just seeing impossibilities? Is that the environment you want to be, you know? So in evaluating your environment, one, you are conscious to the fact that you're going through change. Two, you have self-evaluated yourself. 
three, you have a re-evaluating environment and asking yourself, in this time that I'm going through this pandemic, how is my environment? How is my environment most critical? Now, if you feel you're not in an environment that is more conducive for you to be able to deal with this change, perhaps it will be important to ask yourself, do I have options? Do I have options? Or do I want just to remain there and be able to suffer the consequences of being in a bad environment that will even make me more anxious, that it will even make me more fearful, that it will even make me more stressed and more depressed at the end of the day. So evaluating your environment at this particular time and point that you're going through this pandemic will be very, very, very key in terms of um, in terms of managing this change. And of course, when you're evaluating this environment, also evaluate your social interactions. Evaluate your social interactions. Um, look at what we call social liberation. Am I with people who can be able to actually help me um, be able to do this? Otherwise then, this environment can actually make you have a very negative mindset that you'll not be able to deal with this change in a particular uh, manner that will be able to uh, be very, very, very helpful. Now, the other rule is reinforcement. Reinforce what works, and at the end of the day, make you not be able uh, to actually, you know, help you manage this change effectively. So the other rule for change is reinforcement. Be able to actually evaluate yourself and ask yourself, does this help me be able um, to deal with uh, this change at a point in time? Now. Uh, those will be some of the rules to be able to take note as you go through. Do with this change at this particular point so that you're able to be able to go through this change. And like we are all saying, it's not a very good time to be in. It's not a very uh, nice place to be at. But we have a responsibility, individual responsibility to actually be able to go through this period and your individual what is going through what you're processing uh, in this particular point in time will be very critical in helping you deal with this change i want to stop at that point and perhaps uh, invite is there any questions is there any clarifications uh, perhaps you may want to have a discussion feel free so that we uh, can be able to share more about this change that we are, we are going through. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Richard, for your time. Very insightful conversation there on how to deal with change, especially at this particular time of uncertainty. Uh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what has happened to my screen, but I had seen two questions from uh, Richard. Uh, Richard, uh, can, are you able to ask the same questions again? Richard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, take your time to ask the questions. In the meantime, if you have any other questions, kindly put it on the chat box. We're able to answer all those questions. Okay, I have seen the question there uh, from Richard. Uh, what mm -hmm. makes other people? Uh, I'm going to mute you all. 
Okay, the question was, uh, what makes other people adapt quickly and not, and others not? Uh, we have another question. Uh, uh, let me read all the questions for you, Richard, then you can answer all the questions at once. Uh, the other question from Paul Ngugi, uh, how can you assess yourself? Do you need a particular tool to do that? So uh, keep the questions coming. Uh, we will also send you a, a, a brief or a write-up on this particular presentation. If you want this particular brief, kindly put your email address on the chat box. We, are, we will share with you the, the brief on this presentation. Uh, so, Richard, uh, you can take us through what you think the answers to these questions are. Richard, what makes you know other people adopt quickly and uh, others not? A number of things will uh, be able to explain that. It depends with what is happening in your life at this particular point in time. You know. Um, other people at this particular point in time are, are not, you know, experiencing, you know, um, this coronavirus in a manner that will make them feel it's, it's, it's a, it, you know, it's a, it's a heavy thing. Let me, let me explain that. Um, if you're a business person, perhaps, how much are you losing? I mean, what, what are you attaching as a loss? I already say that change has a degree of loss. And so what will make other people come over it very fast, is the degree of loss that they are going through at this particular point. Now, others, it may be a job that they have lost. Others is an income. What does that job mean for them? What does that income mean for them? And like I say, in which environment are these people in? Are they getting any support that will help them be able to deal with the loss that they're going through at this particular point in time. So what will matter how we are going to react to this is all about what we consider as a loss or as, as a change to us. There are those who, I mean, nothing is happening because perhaps they're not being affected as much as others. So to what extent is this coronavirus affecting you as an individual, as a family, will really depend on how you're going to deal with it and come out of it successfully or not successfully. But what are you also processing? Maybe allow also me to say is that what are you choosing to think? Because what we think at this particular time, what we process at this particular time, will either make us be able to deal with this thing successfully or not. And that is why I say it's important to look at what are you going through? What are you thinking at this particular point in time? that will make you be able to deal with this change either successfully or or not and then there's another question how can you assess yourself i've said is to be more aware i mean of course as an individual you know some of your behaviors they are common to you but when you start to see yourself behaving in some ways that are not you know common to yourself or are not known to yourself saying things that you're not used to say, you know, uh, then perhaps that's the time to ask yourself, am I okay? Are there things happening to me that perhaps I may need to know more about, about, about them? Uh, you may at that particular point in time, just you know, seek social support uh, from your peers or from people around you, but you may also want to seek uh, professional help. And this is where we come in as counselors to be able to actually help you further uh, know whether you're being affected adversely or not. But it starts with you, because then you're able to observe yourself. Am I getting angry, you know, and I used not to get angry over petty issues. Am I, you know, am I withdrawing myself? Am I not keeping, you know, um, to, you know, what I used to do? When you start saying things, <laughs> not happy, then that's the particular time, it's a good time to ask yourself, whether you need um, further support or not. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Richard. I can see another question here from uh, Caroline Ateno. How do we support employees working from home to cope with this change? Uh, there's also another question from, uh, from Alex. 
uh, Kibugi, uh, he says, thanks Richard, in, uh, I in most, most of the time having mild headaches, which seem to go away once I have a conversation with someone, could this be a sign of stress? Mm. Okay. You can answer you, those two uh, as we progress. Yes, let me pick, let me pick the two. Um, uh, of course, headache is, you know, a sign of stress. Um, and I, I'm, I'm glad that you're saying when you have a conversation with other people, it seems to actually uh, go away because it seems that you're able to let out what perhaps may be affecting you uh, mentally that is making you have that, um, that headache. And so it's also to observe your physical uh, symptoms. Uh, of course, are you able, um, are you getting your sleep regularly? If you're not, if you're having insomnia, you know, then perhaps that should ind indicate that maybe things are not happening. Well, are you just fatigued? Yes. That will be like you've said, when you talk to someone, then you are able to be able to deal with it. How do we support employees working from home um, uh, deal with this change? One of the problem because then it robs you of your routine, things that you used to do. I'll advise that you actually be able to revise your schedule because then you're used to doing, you're used to waking up every other morning, going to work. Now, what are you doing at work? You know, you will still have a routine that will engage you at home that will not make you feel uh, strained as a result of this change that is happening. So, importantly, is to is to be able to also know at home what can I engage myself with that will actually uh, utilize my time effectively or constructively <laughs> to help me deal with this um, particular change. I've already, I mean, I was reading social media and other people are saying that really it's very difficult to stay at home with children. Others are saying, you know, being with your spouse the entire day and you're not used to being uh, together the entire day. What? other things can you now do together i think it is time for innovation it's time for innovation what can i do differently to actually be able to utilize my time that i have so that i'm not greatly affected um, with this change and the beauty of this thing is that within ourselves we have the answers within ourselves we know the strategies that we can employ to be able to deal with this you know change and especially those working from home Am I able to have a sensible, for example? Am I able to know that if I wake up at this particular time, what do I need to start doing with? And after that, what do I need to do? If you uh, find yourself being able to utilize your time very well at home, and that will allow you to be able to deal with this change that we're talking about today. But if you don't have a schedule, if you don't have a schedule that you can follow consistently, and when you have a schedule, you don't just have it on paper, but I think actualize that schedule that you have come up with. Say that if I wake up at this time, this is what I expect to do. At this particular hour, this is what I expect to do until the day is over. And you consistently and committedly follow that schedule, then you'll be able to deal with that change constructively. And it will not be a big issue for you as well. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have another question, question from Gerard Odinjo. Uh, how do we deal with introverted staff? at this particular time when working at home to ensure they're productive and remain sane as a result of all of these ongoing changes? Uh, that is a question from Gerald. We have another one from Julius Yabunga. What would you consider as the best ways of engaging in discussion and letting your team own any change processes? How HRs mm -hmm. can deal with anxiety and stress mm -hmm. among staff? Uh, you can take those two. Mm. How do you deal with introverted uh, staff while working at home to just allow them to uh, be able to continue being productive? Again, is to be aware that you have those kind of people in your team. And so what are some of the strategies that as an organization perhaps you may want to employ 
to be able to still connect with those uh, people. Maybe not just the introverted ones, but the entire team. I've seen other people having, you know, daily meetings, you know, uh, the kind of meeting we're having now. So that uh, people are tasked to do some things and you're able to report on the following day uh, on the area that you assigned. And therefore, it will be important to just keep following them and having those constant meetings so that then you assign them some duties and, you know, uh, you know, ask them to report back on the progress of that. Because then when we say work from home, it does not mean that just stay at home and just watch TVs and watch or rather listen to music. But I think there are ways that we can also be productive at home. Only that perhaps they may need closer supervision. And this closer supervision at this particular time, it's not a supervision whereby they're near you, but it's a supervision whereby you can actually schedule meetings on a daily basis just to be able to help them, you know, or just to be able to catch up with them and let them report to different um, assignments that they have been given. And that makes them also productive while they're at home. When I know that I report on a task on a particular time, I know I'll go out of my way, even if no one is watching or seeing what I'm doing, do the task because then I'm supposed to report on that particular task. So let these people be given tasks, let them send reports. You have meetings, you know, online meetings where they'll be able to also report on what they were tasked to do. And that way you'll be able to actually make them productive even when they're at home. Uh, the second question was, as HR, how do we deal with this anxiety? I think uh, as, as HR or as you know, managers in your own respect, it begins with you owning up, that being aware and being conscious that we are going through this change and just allowing your team to, to be. And what do I mean allowing your team to be? Allowing your team to actually share what they're going through. Allow your team to just share their feelings. Allow that your team to just share their experiences at this particular time and point. Otherwise, uh, appearing not to give them that space to talk about what they're going through may be a bit difficult because then these people may be dying or suffering in silence. So one of the best ways to go about it as HR or as leaders or heads of department is to just give these people opportunity to just to ventilate. And we have you know, evidence that when you talk about something, it is almost half solved. So allow these people to just also ventilate. Organize for group debriefings. It could be online meetings like we're having today whereby these staff are just able to share about what are they feeling, what is their experience, and of course, we'll be able to come in to support them to actually rationalize um, or rather deal with those kind of feelings and experience that they're going through. In so doing, we'll be actually supporting these people go through this particular point in time. Because yes, there's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of fear and uh, you know, guilt and many other feelings that people may be going through at this point. All right, thank you so much, uh, Richard. Uh, we have two final questions. Uh, one is from Joyce. Thanks for the great presentation. In the stages mm -hmm. or processes of change, is there a timeline like how long should the denial or anger stage uh, last? Uh, then the other question uh, comes from Paul Ngugi. Will it be advisable to keep alternating different environments at home? even to feel like you are, uh, you are shifting from various offices or places? I think this is a very interesting question uh, from Paul. Uh, sorry? Take it again. Uh, please, uh, uh, the question, question from again. Paul. All right. Yes. Uh, he says, uh, or he asks, would it be advisable to keep uh, alternating different environments at home, even to feel like you are, you are even shifting? from various offices. Mm -hmm. So maybe in the morning you work from the sitting room, then in the afternoon you work from the bedroom or from the corridor outside the garden. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So it's a very interesting <laughs> question there. Yes, yeah, quite a very interesting question there. Um, let me start with it. Eh? Um, would it help this particular individual feel any better? You know, if I was to work in the sitting room in the morning, and perhaps in the afternoon shifts to go to a different uh, place. Again, you know, change is all about in our mind. You know, the, one of the things that we need to be aware of is that change is in our mind. And so if perhaps I feel that moving from point A to point X gives me the comfort of dealing with that particular issue, 
then I will certainly say that is okay to do it. You know, uh, it all depends with what are you thinking about those movements. What are you thinking about moving from the sitting room to the bedroom, uh, to the garden, you know, uh, to the balcony perhaps. And so I will not say that it is a bad thing, only encouraging us to be aware as I'm doing that, is it giving me the comfort that I want? Is it giving me stability? Knowing that, yes, I may not be outside there. I mean, and that's why I said it's time to be innovative. And I think if you do that, that is just one of the ways of being innovative to deal with this particular change in point. Uh, and therefore, that would be good. And perhaps to others who are also uh, with us in this meeting, try it and see whether it's something that can actually help you be able to you know, deal with this change and especially the boredom that comes with being in one particular place you know, throughout the day. And I perhaps want to relate that question to one who imagines that you know, when I'm at work, I keep moving from this department to the other. Now, when I'm at home, what happens uh, with me? So if keeping moving from one department to another and you're at home and you're moving from you know, uh, this place to the other gives you that comfort, gives you that you know, stability of mind, that uh, peace, then that is a good way to uh, together. Uh, to the other question about how long does it take to be in one particular state, I want to say that different people respond differently to this state, to these stages. And what is happening in your life at this particular point in time, others will be in denial longer than the others. So there is no actually quite a definite period where we'll say you're supposed to be in denial for one year, two years, or two months, three months, then you move on. It depends also on your support that you get. It depends with the environment that you actually in at. It depends with the social uh, interactions and the number of things that you're actually uh, experiencing at this particular point. A case in point is one who is able to get good support at this particular point they're able to deal and they're able to move to one stage to the other very comfortably. They're able to move from denial to acceptance, for example, if you get support. And that is where we always um, advise that at this particular point is to be aware of what is happening with you in your life. And you need further support to be able to deal with this change that you're going through. If you don't get change, you may want, I mean, you may stick to one stage no longer than other people who are getting support. If the environment is not very, very good, you may find yourself sticking in one stage, perhaps even in the depression stage, and not moving to the acceptance or any other positive stages that we have talked about. So it's just to look at all those and be able to know what do I need to do with myself to be able to actually navigate to go through this change in a better way that will allow you to you know, uh, adopt positive strategies to deal with, with change. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Richard. I see we are on top of the hour. Uh, however, if you can allow us maybe another 10 minutes, even to the other participants, I can see we have at least two, uh, two or three more questions. We cover it, then we call it a day. So I'll go to, uh, uh, we'll, we'll go to the question by uh, Fatma. Uh, she asks, how do you manage employees who refuse uh, who ref I think uh, I think it's refused to change because of meeting their objective. Uh, that's one question. We have another question by Mariamu. Uh, I think it's more of a comment that she says. Uh, I think daily meetings can be exhaustive, uh, as even virtual ones. I think daily reports will go. Uh, will do. Yeah, e.g., go go have departmental heads come up with templates to be used for daily and weekly summary reports. I think that's a good input from Mariamu. Then we have O George. Uh, there are certain positive behaviors that people will adapt in their new norm while working from home. Uh, how do we reinforce these behaviors when uh, external disruptors will resume after COVID-19 uh, to tilt this new norm? So I think the concern there is more about what will happen even after uh, People have been so used to working from home. Now they, they are introduced back to the normal work environment. Uh, then uh, another question from Faith. Uh, is it a question? I think it's a comment. Uh, the other way to deal with transition is 
uh, designating spaces for different activities. Uh, that is, have a specific place for working, but move when you need to have a meal or even change the environment when you need to do physical activities. That was a, that was a very good comment from Faith. Uh, John Minor as well, it's a comment. I think environment matters a lot. We are able to go outside and work in a serene environment because if the locality is crowded, then noise effects will add to the stress. Uh, one final question from Phoebe, which is, I think it's the third mm -hmm. question. Uh, how do you deal with stigma that will come as a result of C19? That's a new term, C19. All right, uh, take it on, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you very for the uh, the ones that are giving very good comments. Uh, I think it's also very informative. Um, let me let me uh, address the first question. How do you deal uh, with those who do not want to uh, adopt to change? That was the question. Yes, Irritated. that was the question. Yes. Yes. How do you deal with those who don't want? Uh, I think we have to be aware that. Change is personal, and it's an individual's responsibility to actually be able to go through any change. And in this point in time, we're talking about COVID. And so in as much as perhaps our supervisors may want us to adopt, <laughs> which we have not yet accepted that that is where we want to do, then it may become very difficult. Uh, to have those people behave in a certain way. However, if it's affecting work, then that is where maybe they'll come in and say, because of A, B, C, D, and we have tried to actually let you know <laughs> do A, B, C, D, and you're not doing, then at that particular point, maybe there are stipulated rules and guidelines that will actually be followed to be able to uh, deal with this particular person. But as of you know, emotional, psychological reaction to change. I think it's an individual's effort and responsibility. And therefore, those who don't want to conform to change, definitely change will change them at some point. Because then um, we either conform or allow change in its own wisdom to change us at some point. Um, then there was, uh, there, there, was, there was another question about stigma. How do you deal with stigma as a result of this? Uh, COVID-19. Again, it goes back to how do you receive or rather how do you perceive whatever is being said either to you who is infected or affected. Uh, there are those who would choose to just hear what people say and really don't put much more attention to it. So those people, those kind of people will not really be stigmatized. But those people who actually get to hear and they personalize the information that they actually hear from other people in relation to this COVID-19, they're likely to also um, be affected and they're also likely to be stigmatized. Those kind of people, if you cannot be able to deal with that within your social network, within your social support system, then we encourage such people to actually seek support from us counselors who will be able to help them um, journey through the stigma process that they have been subjected as a result of what the you know, uh, participant was calling C19. Uh, remind me the other, the other last question, Purity. There were only those two questions. Uh, the, the question about stigma and uh, the question, oh, no, 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 there was one on how do yes. people, when, how do we reinforce, uh, let me start from the beginning. Uh, there are certain yes. positive behaviors that people will adopt in their new yes. norm when working from home. How do we reinforce these behaviors when external disruptors will resume after the COVID-19 to tilt this new norm? Wow, that's a good question and a good way of ending our presentation this, uh, I think, sure. this afternoon now. Um, I mean, what informs human behavior? I mean, there the are a number of things that informs our behavior. And so if you have developed a positive behavior during this period of time, I want to believe that there's something that informed that behavior. There's something that has actually contributed for you to actually learn. Because then behavior is learned, you know, to a greater extent, you know. Um, and when you learn a behavior, then what <laughs> you to maintain that behavior? 
Behavior is maintained by the society, you know, very important. People around you will maintain that behavior. And so if you have developed a good behavior in this particular point in time, um, I wish that person could have given us this example, but I know there are a number of good behaviors that people will develop at this particular point in time. Then it actually calls for your personal, you know, um, personal commitment to maintain that behavior, but also just, you know, allow people around you to continue reinforcing that behavior that you have learned from this particular point in time. So that even when those distractors come, you have what it takes within yourself to be able to maintain that behavior and not allowing those personal destructive things that will come after the positive uh, COVID-19 to actually um, remove or rather take away this good behavior that, that you have. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, Richard. I think it was a very great conversation and I hope we have moved to the next level. I can see John Minor, as, uh, I think you have inspired him because he says mm -hmm. great topic. I think I need to study uh, counseling or psychology as part of new skill to help mm -hmm. and understand people more. That was good. Uh, yeah, from yeah. Techno Spark 4, uh, amazing presentation, great insights from BB. Uh, these are just comments that we are, we are receiving. Uh, another one is uh, from a uh, great job uh, from, uh, uh, who is it from? Uh, from, uh, just hold on a second. I think I've lost uh, the chat. So uh, thank you so much, Richard, and everyone else who was able to, to join us on this particular presentation. Uh, we have very good plans. Uh, for you and even for your staff, those people who who who, who have staff. I know uh, most of the people here, I can see their HR managers. So invite us also to your to your meetings uh, such that you're able to impact this knowledge to your staff. Uh, and especially if you're facing the challenge of uh, stress, you're, you're not so sure how you're able to manage our staff when they are working away from the office. Uh, I think this is a conversation myself and Richard would be very interested to take on. Uh, so I think without much further ado, uh, I hope everyone ha was able to leave their email address behind so that we can share with you a, a brief on this particular presentation and also keep this conversation going. Uh, feel free on your screen now is our contact address. Uh, feel free to reach out to us if you need more support, especially on this particular topic of change. Uh, we are more than happy to, as I've said earlier, to be invited to your, to your meetings just to hear what fears and, uh, and, and, and worries your staff have and to be able to answer as many questions as possible. So uh, thank you very much, Richard. That one I can't say more than enough times. Uh, I can see very good. <laughs> I can see very good comments coming from our chat box. A uh, great session from Caroline. Keep up with the good work. A uh, great presentation. Uh, thanks from Mageto. Uh, I'll talk with our HRs, our HR for an invite via Zoom. That's John Miner. Yes, we are more than mm -hmm. to join you in your own private spaces. So uh, I think without much further ado, we'll call this conversation an end. Uh, but keep talking to, to people because this is a change process. And as Richard was saying, it's either we change or the change changes us. So you want to be on the right side of, of this particular conversation. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope to see you all soon. Keep checking out our social media pages. Uh, we have very many webinars that are coming up in the coming weeks. Uh, just to put you in the right headspace when you're still working at home. So thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, keep keeping safe and uh, remember to sanitize. Thank you.